There's a common mistake people make when sketching the graph of trigonometric functions that have a horizontal shift and a stretch. And it has to do with the order of the shift and the stretch. So let's sketch a graph of this function, cosine pi over 4 times x plus 1. Uh, we'll do it the right way once, and then we'll do it the wrong way so that you can see the mistake that, that people sometimes make. So let's, uh, since the trig function involved is cosine, let's start with the graph of cosine, and then we'll apply some graphical transformations to get the graph that we want. So regular old unmodified cosine looks like this. I find it easier to draw the, wa the wave shape first and then label everything so that it's uh, so that it's correct. So one cycle is going to take up to 2 pi, and the height is at 1, down to minus 1, and this halfway point is at pi. Okay. Now, um, when you have more than... So we have two horizontal operations in here because inside the function there are two things that are happening. There's this plus 1 right here, and there's multiplication by pi over 4. And the easiest way to get this right is to start at your parentheses that are that represent the function or that contain the inside of the function I guess you could say <clears throat> and work your way inwards from the parentheses respecting the order of operation so when we work our way inwards from these parentheses the first operation that we hit is actually the one that's furthest outside on the inside part and that's this multiplication by pi over 4. So we should deal with this pi over 4 first. So we're going to replace x with pi over 4 times x. That gives us cosine pi over 4 times x for our formula. And the corresponding uh, operation on the graph is compression horizontally by pi over 4. Okay, it, You might not know what exactly this is going to do. There are two ways to figure out where this uh, end of cycle point ends up. One is uh, the period of our modified function is 2 pi divided by pi over 4. And when you do some algebra, you get 8 here. So our end of cycle is going to be at 8, which is slightly more than 2 pi. So it turns out that this wasn't a compression. It was actually a stretch. <clears throat> the other way to figure that out is this coordinate right here, 2 pi, that we started with, when you uh, when you compress by pi over 4, well, when you compress by any number, what that does to a horizontal coordinate is it divides it by that value. You can see that this is the same thing that we got by thinking about the period. So either way, you get 8. But putting this coefficient of pi over 4 in here, it divides horizontal coordinates by that coefficient. OK, we haven't done any vertical operations, so this graph is still going from plus 1 down to minus 1. OK, now the next operation we need to do should make this plus 1 appear. And to make the plus 1 appear, in the formula, we need to replace x with x plus 1. So that gives us cosine pi over 4 times x plus 1. And notice that I'm writing parentheses here because this entire chunk here, this x right here, we're sort of crossing that out, taking this entire x plus 1 and putting it in there. So there should be parentheses here to indicate that it's this entire chunk x plus 1 that we're putting in all as a single piece. Okay, and then for the graph, uh, replacing x with x plus 1, that shifts left by one unit. Okay, so now the beginning of our cosine cycle is instead of being at zero, it's going to be at minus one. And our end of cycle, instead of being at eight, it's going to be at seven. And then halfway through, I guess, is going to be at three. 
So something like this. Not my best work, but you get the idea. And again, it's going up and down between 1 and minus 1. All right, so that's the right way to do it. Um, and the important part here was how we were being careful about the order of operations and about these parentheses right here. So now let's see the wrong way to do it, the mistake that people often make. So again, we're sketching a graph of cosine of pi over 4 times x plus 1. OK, so we're still going to start with cosine x, which looks like this, going from between 1 and minus 1 in the vertical direction and completing a cycle in 2 pi. Now, the mistake people make is they aren't careful about the order that they do their operations. So first, they replace x with x plus 1. That gives you cosine of x plus 1. And that shifts left 1. OK, so now our cycle is starting at minus 1. Uh, horizontally, it's starting at minus 1. Vertically, it's starting at 1. And it's ending at, uh, well, I guess this is 2 pi minus 1, whatever that is. It's something like 5.24. So it looks something like this. Vertically, it's going between 1 and minus 1. And then, now we need to make that pi over 4 appear. And here's where things get a little hazy. You know, if you if you write down the operation you're actually doing, right, inside a function, you can replace x with something. So what we should do is replace x with pi over 4 times x, which would give you cosine of pi over 4 times x. And there should be parentheses right here. Here, I'll do them in green. Here and here, plus 1. And that has effect, the effect of stretching the graph by some certain amount. It's not so important what. But you can see the problem with this doing it in this order is that we didn't get the function we were aiming for. What we got was cosine pi over 4 times x plus 1. But what we wanted was cosine of pi over 4 times x plus 1. And these two functions are not the same. Okay. So depending on the order of operations that are that's inside your trig function, if you have more than one horizontal operation, you need to be extremely careful to respect the order uh, so that you end up with the function that you wanted to get and a graph that matches it.